Let's do a couple of examples to illustrate Zeeman splitting. These two examples here we've done already in a previous video lecture, but let's go ahead and do them again for review. How many spectral lines would you expect to see for a singlet S0 to a singlet P1 transition when the sample is in a magnetic field? Well, let's just see. Let's write down the singlet S0 state here. And here's the singlet, uh, sorry, that's singlet P, singlet P1 state. Now I'm going to draw this as three degenerate energy levels. Why is that? Well, if we look at the J value here, J is equal to one, this means that M sub J can be minus one, zero, or plus one. Since we have a singlet state, that means S is equal to zero, what we say about J can also be said about L. So here L is equal to one, because L plus S is equal to J, and if, if S is equal to zero, L is equal to one. And therefore, M sub L can be minus one, zero, and plus one. So when you have a singlet state, we don't have, to, we don't really have to distinguish between J and L. But here they are, corresponding to different values of M sub J or M sub L. If you look down here, well here J is equal to zero, which means that M sub J can only be equal to zero. Or L, in this case here, the S means L is equal to zero, and that means that M sub L can only be equal to zero, only a single state here. Now let's put this in a magnetic field B. Well, since there's no angular momentum here, there's no uh, interaction with the magnetic field, this energy level, the singlet, P, uh, singlet S zero, will be unchanged in energy. However, here we have a splitting of energy levels corresponding to M sub L or M sub J if you want equals plus one, zero, and minus one. Here M sub J is equal to zero. So it looks like we're going to have three possible transitions, one there, one there, and one there. All right, let's take a look at the selection rules to see whether all of these are allowed. The selection rules are delta S equals zero. We look at that, yes, singlet to singlet, delta S is equal to zero, that's okay. Let's look at delta L, that will be plus or minus, uh, that'll be plus or minus one or zero. L goes from a zero to one, so that is okay, it's allowed by that selection rule. Delta J has to be zero or plus or minus one. J here goes from zero to one, changes by one, that's okay. And then delta M sub J has to be zero or plus or minus one. We check that out, M sub J goes from zero to minus one, zero to zero, zero to plus one. So that seems to check out. And then the final check, really what we have to make sure is that the angular momentum changes by at least, or by one unit. And that means that delta L, delta J, and delta M sub J cannot all be zero that way because what you're doing here is absorbing a photon which has a unit of angular momentum. So we have to have a change, at least all of these, or at least one of these should change to a delta uh, not equal to zero. So we can't have all zeros for these delta L, delta J, and delta M sub J. And that's okay, they're not all zero. So it looks like all three of those transitions will be allowed. So if we look at the spectrum intensity versus frequency, we'll see three lines, one, two, three. So to answer that question, how many lines? We would expect to see three. Now let's go down here and look for this kind of transition, a doublet S one-half to a doublet P one-half transition. We'll take a look at that. So here's the ground state, doublet S one-half. The excited state is a doublet P one-half. Here we don't have singlet states, so we're going to have to worry about LS coupling, so we'll just look at J. J is equal to one half, which implies that M sub J goes from minus J to plus J in integer steps, minus one half to one half. 
Here also j is equal to one half, so m sub j can be minus one half or plus one half. So let's draw these as a doublet and these as a doublet. Each one of these corresponds to a different value of m sub j. Without a magnetic field, they're degenerate. They have the same energy. Now let's apply magnetic field B. What's going to happen is that you're going to get a splitting where this value of m sub j is equal to plus one half and this is equal to minus one half and the same way here this will be a splitting higher energy level will be m sub j equal plus one half lower will be minus one half all right so let's look at possible transitions we can go from here to here we can go from here to here here we can go from there to there and here we go from there to there so there are four possible transitions Let's look at the selection rules. Delta S equals zero. Uh, it's doublet to doublet. Yeah, that's okay. How about delta L equal zero or plus or minus one? Yes, here L is equal to zero. Here it equal to one, so it's a plus one transition. That selection rule is okay for all of these. Uh, let's look at delta J, zero or plus or minus one. All right, looks like delta J goes from one half to one half, it's zero. Okay, remember that you cannot have a zero to zero transition, but that's okay, we're going a one half to one half transition for delta J. And looks look at delta M, uh, delta, what are we talking about? Delta M sub J <laughs> is zero or plus or minus one. Okay, here we go, delta M sub J is zero. These are delta M sub J equal one, minus one half to one half, this one one so that looks like it's okay so it looks like all four of these transitions will be allowed and if we look at the in spectrum intensity versus frequency we should see four lines so that's how you determine how many lines there are in a uh, spectrum that normally would have degenerated energy levels but the degeneracy is removed by putting the sample in a magnetic field